All right. Good morning, everybody. Sorry for the delay. I really needed some extra coffee this morning. Uh, so, thanks for joining me as I go through the offer available to us in Canada this morning. And uh, yeah, to start, we have that 15-inch uh, gaming laptop from Best Buy. And uh, yeah, that one is no longer enjoying a rebate. So let's update that back to regular price. All right, so what are your uh, plans for the weekend? Are you planning to shop? Maybe uh, enjoy some offline quality time instead? Definitely looks like the kind of weather, although I haven't looked at the forecast personally over here. Because in my case, I'm probably going to be inside and working on well, partly tech advisor, partly um, job number two, because I've got to pay the bills after all. That and I really, really did not manage to uh, get as far as I wanted this week. Been planning some new... Um, new content for Tech Advisor, including more detailed profile for uh, games. Uh, and there's a few reasons for that. Uh, right now, most of the traffic I get is from gamers, people looking for a new computer to be able to uh, play, uh, well, let's be blunt, Fortnite. Um, a distant second is Rainbow Six Siege. So those are the two games currently that uh, are garnering the most interest. So definitely made sure I updated those, improved the uh, technical SEO for both of those as well. And I know that uh, microformats and uh, structure data and all that sort of stuff probably sounds very boring for to most of you. It's actually pretty enjoyable for me. All right, that laptop is enjoying a new coupon, so let's put that in there. It's also back in stock over at HP. So you can buy it for 630 over on HP's website directly. <clears throat> Otherwise, I see Staples also carries it. Mm -mm. Uh, that laptop currently is, yeah, it looks mostly gone from stock, but for some reason, one of their store nearby say they still might carry on. So let's keep that as a sold in store option. <clears throat> so yeah, been working on new content lately. So yeah, been improving on the uh, game listing. I want to put even more stuff in there. Right now I'm satisfying the minimum requirements for each of them, but I'm definitely going to start um, assigning them to genres and uh, tagging them and all that sort of stuff. 
added Dauntless to the database yesterday, which is a new uh, a new multiplayer free to play RPG from people I actually used to work with. So um, some uh, great people working behind that one. Haven't tried it. Well, probably won't try it. Just not my kind of game. Uh, but yeah, I filled up their profile yesterday. It was a little tough to do, I'll be honest. Uh, I needed Wikipedia to actually be able to figure out what kind of game it would be. Because they don't mention if it's... Right now they, all, they mention it's an open beta. Which nowadays sadly means nearly nothing. So, took a lot of digging just to figure out, okay, once you're out of beta, what kind of game are you going to be? And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a free-to-play. <clears throat> and the interesting thing about it is that from what I've been able to gather, well, you can play it by, your own, uh, by yourself if you want. Inviting friends seems to be highly recommended. So I'm not even sure that playing it single player is really going to be viable. But yeah, it doesn't sound like an MMO style of thing. Um, probably closer to uh, what the first Guild War was with... Uh, Basically, you form your party and uh, you just play with the people you're currently play connected to, which um, is a format I kind of like. I'm kind of bothered by strangers in my games, to be totally honest. So let's say if I was, if I did play, <clears throat> sorry, if I did play multiplayer game at all, that might be uh, all good uh, characteristics for me. Just not interested. But yeah, the amount of digging it took just to complete that profile and figure out, okay, what, what is the game? There's plenty of material of what the story is, there's plenty of mater material of the settings and all of that, and those big creatures, and... But yeah, just figuring out, well, is that an MMO? Is that... Is it free to play? Do you pay to play? I see those founder packs you're selling on your website. Was it for, uh, what is it for? Uh, and took a lot of digging, and uh, in the end, they weren't the ones really providing the answers to any of that. Just had to read through long article everywhere, was scattered around the internet, and um, best source of information was Wikipedia, which kind of collated most of that information. So, yeah, cookie points for me for providing a press kit, including logos and stuff like that I can use and present the game as best as I can, that I definitely appreciate. Uh, but, uh, yeah, took a lot of digging to actually know, okay, what is the game? What is it? So that kept me busy quite a bit yesterday. Added a few logos on the site. Uh, for a long time, I had um, external uh, optical media drives. So DVD players, Blu-ray players, you know, that sort of things. Uh, it's more and more common to not have an optical drive in a laptop nowadays. Because we just don't use optical media that much now. 
not on PCs anyway. Uh, we use them uh, in media centers and stuff like that in most cases. But yeah, not PCs. So uh, I did. I added a few uh, USB connected drives for that sort of thing for people who still use that or still want to watch movies on their laptops and stuff like that but don't necessarily have a drive built into their computer that way they can at least you know rip it take it with them and uh, if they just need entertainment while traveling or stuff like that they can play that stuff um so yeah um I did an icon for that, didn't have an icon for that category of accessories for the longest time, so finally got rid of that placeholder. I also added a new category to the site, although uh, it's not visible right now, and those are game consoles. As I'm going through... Um, going to have a little bit more information uh, well give a little bit more space to uh, gaming um, I wanted to uh, give a larger place uh, to game consoles wanted to add them to the site for a long period of time So I uh, create. I have a category. It's got an icon. It's got a social letter for sharing and all of that. Uh, so far, I have the switch on the site, and the switch is visible. <clears throat> In part because the switch use uses hardware which is nearly nearly standard. So it's very easy to, um, it was very easy to add that one, although it didn't fit the um, usual form as well as many others. So right now it's both a console and a tablet, because mobile gaming right now, yeah, it's um, mostly a tablet thing, or at least according to the tech advisor that see lexicon so i'll see how that sits with most people it's definitely one of the nicer options for uh, mobile gaming i must say even though nintendo got a nintendo and uh, they definitely put quite a few uh, hoops that you have to uh, jump through in order to do very basic stuff but uh, you know it just sometimes when you're on a go you you'd rather play you know bread of the wild than play a cookie clicker or uh, you know the sort of things that we find on mobile gaming most of the days uh, the fact that you have a joystick in there is also quite nice for faster paced gameplay. A touch screen is nice for quite a few things, but for emulating buttons and uh, thumbsticks and stuff like that, like uh, I played my share of uh, dual stick shooters on mobile and uh, yeah wasn't that satisfying and that was before every every game started stopping you every five minutes to show you ads too so i don't know i'd rather have the switch then than uh, put up with most of the stuff that happens on mobile these days not being prodded and targeted for ads all the time and all of that. It's kind of annoying.
So yeah, uh, working on the Xbox, Xbox One X and uh, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 4 Pro. Uh, started my research on those. Uh, it's still pretty standard hardware in there. It's just not that easy to necessarily compare to um, what's it, what is uh, available on PC. And I kind of need that just for the basic data on them. Also made some changes so that uh, software compatibility was treated a little bit differently for consoles. Because one of the big differences I found on consoles versus PC and uh, based on some of my experience in the past working for companies and on projects happening on consoles is that yeah the hardware in a console is objectively much worse than what you have in a PC. Much, much worse. It's very old tech and it's very far from the level of performance that you can get on a good gaming PC. But the thing is, games on consoles are developed quite differently from games on PCs as well. Because you have uh, fixed hardware on consoles and you know what kind of exactly the kind of hardware people are going to use, you can optimize for that to a crazy degree. And most consoles architectures are built to open a few doors for very talented programmers. So they have extra pathways in their uh, memory overrides and basically different way you can map memory to different things. Stuff that you don't do on PC. So you've got all those opportunities on consoles that a developer can and usually will take advantage of. While on PCs, you've got a standard architecture. So you've got a lot of choice. You can build the PC exactly the way you like, but every component has to interact with every other components in a standard way. And those standards are not always, well, there's a few kinks every, one, every once in a while simply because, yeah, it's an industry-wide standard. That's why you can have, uh, you can have an AMD-based PC with an NVIDIA video card and it works fine. But you're always expected to go through that standard pipe between the pieces of hardware and then each piece separately can do their own thing. But you don't have those special pipes and those specialized kind of instruction in the base instruction set that you have on consoles. The other thing is that you don't know what hardware is going to be present in your consumer's machines. A little bit like, I don't know if you've uh, ever played anything from the, uh, the demo scene. In the demo scene, they basically build their own computers to... Um, run the games or multimedia uh, program they want to run and that's how they can create programs which are maybe 64k in size but run gorgeous 
visuals and music and all that sort of stuff but that's because they're targeting a very specific hardware they have their own machine they they test on that machine and they uh, make their presentation on that which is one of the reasons why uh, when demo scene projects get published outside of the demo scene, often they're pretty hard to get to run on whatever hardware you might have. And often those things double, triple, quadruple, <laughs> decuple in size easily just to be able to account for scenarios and uh, basically emulate the hardware the demo scene was supposed to run on on other machines as well and usually it's never quite as good so yeah the same thing can be done on pcs uh, having those you know optimizing very accurately and all of that but the thing is uh, it's not a viable option for any widely distributed games simply because most people that are going to play your game are not necessarily going to have the hardware you have optimized for so when you develop for a game for PC you develop for the standards and uh, you already know making games take a long time it's a lot of effort from a lot of people so those projects are always they're constantly on the brink of uh, being a major failure financially so yeah you basically have to cut your losses at one point and publish um, you cannot keep a game in development indefinitely and expect it to still be um, a viable product when it comes out you've got some kind of a window in which it's going to be a viable product after that it's going to be superseded by something else so yeah you've got to publish those at some point so you don't spend necessarily that much time optimizing everything to the nth degree well because it would simply take you more time to do that than the time the hardware is going to be in use anyway there's going to be new hardware out on which your optimization are not going to work so usually the way uh game developers on pc work instead of doing heavy optimization on their end they get in touch with uh, the uh, video card manufacturers i.e amd or nvidia and uh basically get in touch with them and um nvidia and amd always after every big game release have new drivers out which include optimization for the game in question and AMD hardware manufacturer end up being the ones doing the extra optimization rather than the developer themselves but obviously the hardware manufacturers are only going to do that for very very popular games so yeah as a result you never get the kind games on pcs do not benefit from the same degree of optimization than consoles so even though consoles are using very old hardware um 
if you were to build a PC with that kind of hardware nowadays, it would not be a very good one. It would maybe run, it would run stuff like the, uh, uh, the office suite would run simple games. You would, if you built a PS4 into a PC, you would not be able to run, uh, god of war on it simply because you could not optimize things enough on a pc architecture compared to a console one so even though those things are you know it's not good hardware uh, it's not very good for the task it's asked to do because it's known that developer can optimize for them and that the uh, console developer included special set of instruction and special tools that the developer can use to you know take advantage of the hardware as much as possible you end up being able to uh, run games at much higher performance than what the hardware suggests so I had to take that into account when um, calculating the uh, proficiency of uh, those kind of hardware. So you can expect to, um, I've started adding games and which consoles they run on and all of that. And eventually I'll be able to, uh, Basically, right now, I've got a blog article with a list of games available on each platform. And uh, I've got a budget calculator because, of course, I made a budget calculator. That's kind of weird thing that I like to make. And uh, basically, all those tools all be able to run off the database instead of running them from, well, basically me manually updating the list every once in a while. So, yeah, that's something I'm looking forward to. I don't know if I'll be able to necessarily grow the site in that direction very far. And for just to open new avenues of possible revenue for me, I also included links where you can buy every piece of software. And one of the great things about that is that... Oh yeah. Well, tra uh, software travels very easily. You don't have regional um, stand. There's not as much regional standards that you have to adhere to in order to publish software. So the same game gets played in canada the u.s europe and uh, even australia even though australia is one of the uh, most active uh, well they want to regulate software a lot more than most people so there's those kind of a uh, age regulation usually that uh, change from country to country but it's still the same software so that way my visitors from the u.s can benefit from those pages a little bit more uh, the thing i'm not doing right now is uh, include pricing for those links and stuff like that um, simply because i've got too much work to do a lot of those sites would not would probably give me trouble in automating uh, link maintenance if I were to track pricing the way I do it for hardware uh, so yeah I'm not touching that yet 
I don't want to do daily checks on every link on another category of products just yet. Because I've already got two, pretty much the, the equivalent of two full-time jobs right now. I don't, I cannot take a third one. So I'm not, uh, I'm not crossing that war, that bridge quite yet. I already have so much, um, so much work to do just to catch up to, uh, uh, the extra data I have to put it to make the, uh, game listing more complete. Um, that will already keep me busy for months. So I'm not touching prices yet. Okay, sorry, uh, to, uh, whenever I'm at BNH, I've got a few extra hoops to jump through uh, in order to get the Canadian pricing and a few things like that. So it's still a little bit of a, how would I say, a manual process. So yeah, I changed quite a few things on the site. Uh, I was really hoping to unveil the um, console section yesterday, but that didn't happen. Just not a very productive day. At this point, I'm pretty convinced I'm just too exhausted. Um, and I don't know why I'm going to um, account for that. It's not exactly like I can take a vacation. Because, yeah, I could... De I, I mean, it's not a very big season for me right now. I could say, yeah, I go away from the site. And I'm just going to let the robot do the updates, maybe not even do the newsletter one weekend and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. And that would give me a pretty nice vacation right there. Problem is job number two. Uh, job number two, I'm alone there too. I uh, have no vacation possibility there. And I am pretty much on call all the time. Which means no vacations for me as long as I've got that other job. So I'm really hoping I can ditch that one. But it's not going, it's definitely not going to happen this year, so I have to find some way I'm going to be able to recover. And right now I'm kind of living in a state where all I can think of is going to sleep. It's like, what would I rather do, sleep or play, have fun, go see something nice, uh, have an adventure? No, sleep. I just want to sleep. Yeah. 
And yeah, I kind of need a way out of that. I just don't think that's going to happen for another year. So I have to find something more manageable. And ideally, my only job would be tech advisor. It's just not happening right now. I'm very far from the count indeed. And since it's not working financially, and I kind of need it to, I'm in a situation where, well, I might be overextending myself. Actually, it's a near guarantee. Where I experiment with new things like this stream, for instance, and try to find something that people are actually gonna like. And, you know, at least have some kind of interaction. That would help me a lot, even if it's not bearing finan financial uh, fruits or maybe even ever. Because the thing that has been hard for techadvisor.ca is that, yeah, sure, I'm hoping to help people searching for text, but I'm also uh, trying to, I'm especially trying to help people that don't necessarily like to hear about tech which means that uh yeah social wise nothing has worked yet even if i spend money on advertising and all that sort of thing to try to extend my reach it never results in anything viable maybe i'll gain a few followers at one point or something like that but they all drop and go away really quickly so yeah been doing that for several years at this point and I'm still trying to find a way I'll be able to make this worth my time somehow. And that whole idea of tracking prices like I'm doing right now, I think it's very useful. You would think that retailers would be happy about me advertising their products basically uh, however that's not quite how things are transpiring right now they're different in many cases they're actively trying to impede my uh, impede my efforts So, yeah, I've got to find something else. So this is why I'm experimenting with new things. Just trying to see where I can take things and try to see if I can generate some kind of interest somewhere. Because I know there's a lot of people that needs the kind of help that I'm providing on the site. I get a fair amount of visitors. 
Although, it's often... It's somewhat displaced. Uh, a lot of people are still visiting the site looking for uh, products which are currently out of stock and probably will be till the end of time. And since I don't sell anything, and I mean, even if I did, uh, You know, a product which is no longer on sale is no longer on sale. There's not much I can do about that. So there's a whole lot of that. Oh, yeah, anyway. This is me talking business right now. Simply because I have to. Um... Yeah, because on those streams, I'm mostly talking to myself this day, these days, uh, which is fine. And I definitely expected to do that for quite a while without any kind of um, encouragement or interaction or anything, really. Uh, but yeah, it's been at least a month I've been having that, and so far, well, quite simply put, nobody's watching. Nobody's watching, nobody's interacting, and in the end, I'm not, it's not taking a lot of extra effort on my part, at least there's that. Uh, but uh, it definitely impedes my efforts on the days I'm holding the stream because my workflow is not as optimized. It's optimized for for the show, uh, but not for productivity. Um, what I mean by that is instead of focusing on the uh, links that need updates the most, I kind of try to stick to a, co a coherent uh, order of things for my viewers so that I don't jump from product to product very quickly like I used to do. And that means that uh, in order to get the job done, I have to stop at several places where I usually wouldn't be spending much time, really. Like links from tertiary or worst uh, retailers where people are very unlikely to do anything, but on which I want to, keep, well, but links I want to keep track of because every once in a while there's a deal there. Um, so yeah, that slows my whole process down. So quantitatively, it doesn't change really the amount of work I do. It just prevents me from being uh, as efficient as I can with my workflow as I would if I weren't streaming so yeah basically having to stream like that cost me quite a bit it forces me also to uh, stream during a period where I'm not definitely I'm not necessarily my best self either like this morning I'm so incredibly tired I've managed to have a pretty good rant so far, so uh, I think I'm doing pretty well. But uh, yeah, I definitely had a few streams that uh, were both very tiring and very draining emo emotionally. And the thing is, I just, if I try to stick to schedule like that every once in a while, I have to go over something like this. And um, 
and that's probably true of any kind of stream I might do but right now this one is not really bearing fruit so maybe I haven't found my um, the proper window in terms of timing or anything like that so um, yeah it's unless some uh, some big changes happen today or tomorrow this is probably my last week doing this stream in this fashion i'll probably uh, uh revive and do this on special occasions like peak seasons and stuff like that because yeah it's definitely uh, we're definitely not in the time of the year where people buy computers the most. Although it's far from dead. It's much better than uh, the first few months of the year. I can tell you that. Uh, but... Uh, You know, there's not a lot of, of interest, so I expect that those morning updates like this, I'm probably going to bring that back for um, back to school events at, uh, you know, near September, which is probably the best period of the year to buy a new computer if you look globally of course um that and around the holiday season but i'll need some kind of content to keep the channel open the rest of the year definitely keeping the video version of the newsletter because that is working fairly well well it's working fairly well on one platform i've got zero reach on facebook uh, in most cases i think i have zero views on youtube uh maybe one or two on twitch but uh twitter does um i've got fairly interesting reach on that so definitely going to keep the uh vi the two and a half minute video version of the newsletter that way and i don't know i think i'll try to because i like streaming uh this right now it's actually fairly enjoyable I've been I I have a great time talking to you guys uh, whether or not anyone's there listening really it would be much better with some user interactions but uh, even talking to myself I've definitely seen some uh, benefits there uh, so, I definitely want to keep doing that. Uh, last weekend, I was hoping to um, stream one of my favorite recent games, which is uh, Signal from Tolva. <clears throat> but sadly, that did not happen. I had to deal with a few complications around the house and that uh, that prevent, uh, prevented me from doing anything else than um, dealing with that situation as aggravating as it was so that didn't work then I'm hoping to do that pretty soon and I don't expect to be ever popular as a game streamer. But I want to do a little bit of that. Simply because I enjoy streaming. Um, 
and maybe having a little bit of gaming on some sort of a schedule will mean that I'll be able to actually play a little because right now uh, I don't really have time to play games. So that, that might help me a little bit there. And that would provide a little bit of content for the channel and keep it going and, you know, just have a presence out there. And I'll try to figure out if there's some kind of format I can adopt. Some kind of show I can plan on... Uh, at the time of the day, time of the week where I'm, you know, I've got better energy than I do in the morning and where people will be listening as well. Because most people are at work right now. And so, yeah, Friday mornings. Not exactly surprised that nobody's tuning in, uh, especially in the uh, on the demographics I'm targeting the most. Not that I'm targeting targeting, it's just that I'm trying to help specific people, i.e. Canadians. Simply because one of the main goal of my site is to uh, alleviate the frustration I experienced myself when shopping for tech. So I'm kind of trying to, uh, you know, have an answer, kind of, you know, cater to a specific need. And yeah, through this, I'm also trying to, to a degree, entertain myself. Trying to do something that will hold my interest enough that I can will myself to uh, go to work every day. and do the work even though I cannot, I don't have the, uh, let's say, benefits of having a boss that uh, will force me to do it, you know? If I like what I'm doing, I'm also more likely to, uh, well, provide a good product. So I'll see, trying to think of some kind of, uh, well, I would love to make it a talk show. I just don't have someone to talk to. Because that could be interesting. I could do some kind of a live retrospect, maybe on the uh, picks I kept for the newsletter. Maybe instead of streaming in 
the morning on Saturdays, I could try have it in the afternoon instead. And maybe just for an hour go over the picks, how they've evolved over time, because usually between Friday and Saturday, there's already changes. Like last week, one gaming desktop was very attractively priced at Best Buy. Uh, and Saturday, of course, it was sold out. It was already available online only. And yeah, they ran out. So it could be interesting to review how those uh, choices have evolved and uh, maybe try to present alternatives or stuff like that. Uh, maybe uh, spend a little bit more time on each separate device and basically cover why I picked them, what is interesting about them, that sort of thing. Things I cannot do in the morning like this because I've got nearly 500 links to update uh, before noon. <clears throat> So uh, I definitely need to uh, I need to be pretty quick on my Friday mornings. So couldn't necessarily spend a lot of time developing on them, although I do every once in a while. So I could do a show like that. There would be a fair amount of. Uh, Repetition from week to week and all of that. Because there's definitely a trend. The uh, My picks tend to uh, come back on a fairly regular basis. So it's already... I'm already trying to combat that repetition even in a quick format like the two minute and a half video. And yeah, the whole reason why it's two and a half video is that that way I can post it directly on Twitter. Because if I add when I when you have something longer and let's say you publish that on uh, you know YouTube and then you send a tweet about it, just because you have a link pointing elsewhere, you get penalized. Your stuff will be served to fewer people. Same thing happens with every other social media out there, or pretty much. Because most social media want you to, um, well, stay on their social media. So whenever you have a link pointing elsewhere, uh, that post doesn't get distributed as much. And since I'm already facing pretty bad odds on the social media front, I wanted something I could post natively everywhere that would still cover the basis of what I have to say. And uh, it's not like I can do valid recommendation in 140 characters or now 280 characters or less. So video was good for that and it did work on uh, the Twitter platform. At least that way I get distributed. I think I've got... I managed to reach a little bit more people with the video version of the newsletter on Twitter alone that I can do with my entire distribution list on MailChimp.
So for that, it was worth the effort. But yeah, it's kind of my way to uh, game the algorithm again. But yeah, I'm trying to find something else to stream instead of this. Now I've got a few ideas. I'm definitely going to um, put something else forward. I'm pretty sure this is the last weekend where I stream on my current schedule. Got a few prize drops at Best Buy on inexpensive laptops already. Yeah, only $50 off in this case, so not necessarily the most attractive prospect. That's definitely better than nothing. But yeah, expect quite a few changes from me in the, um, probably starting next week even. I will try to finish the job on uh, game consoles. Not sure I'll be able to manage it today, but maybe during the weekend if I'm lucky. Um... And I'll try to find something new to stream as well. Instead of having this live show where I update pricing data and stuff like that. Maybe have uh, something shorter but more casual as well at a later hour in the day. Although, not sure I should make it shorter. Because I still have to cover... What, five different time zones in Canada? Should probably look into my um, my sites analytics. Try to figure out which time is the most popular. And try to have my show during that period of time. So right now, most of my visitors come from the uh, Ontario region. Uh, Montreal as well, so both of those are in the same time zone. Even though my data is probably most accurate for people in Alberta, because, well, that's where I'm located. So, um, yeah, I've got a better, a better sense of how things are going over here, here. but Edmonton and Cal Calgary are, I think, near number seven of uh, cities.
But yeah, it's kind of strange. Peak time right now is uh, 5 p.m. on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And that's not what I would have thought. Or 10 a.m. on Thursday. So who knows, maybe I should do that then instead. Just have my idea. I don't have great data for those period of time. And usually I'm stuck on job number two more on, uh, well, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So that makes things a little harder. Okay, let's click somewhere there. I have to make sure I have the right data in place. And I do. All right. Came price came back up a little bit at the source on that monitor. Oh, and it was not available now. It's available online, and yeah, now it's online only. Still better than out of stock. So yeah, trying to offer a better show for everyone out there. So if you've got ideas, suggestion, or anything like that, by all means, let me know. I would definitely be interested in hearing from my readers or viewers in this case. Right now, most of the feedback I get is in the form of analytics, and that's already been very useful to me. Just by having a sense of what por uh, which piece of software is uh, generating the most interest or even products, that actually helps me, that dart me in specific places where I'm needed the most. So that way, even though my time is very limited, um, well, I can cover the uh, content which ma matters to you the most. So definitely analytics have helped me make a better products, no question there. Because yeah, you cannot expect feedback from most of your audience in any format. And that's just normal. It's just hard to, because uh, you know, I'm trying to help people, but without any, so not having any um, return of information makes it hard to know if you're actually helping or not. 
But at least with analytics, I have some kind of a basic idea of what I can do to help. Yeah, I already look like a pretty calm morning. Although it's one of the things I'm noticing, I don't get that much traffic on Friday, especially in the mornings. I would expect it to be one of the busiest day of the week, but it's not actually. And that still puzzles me quite a bit. So there is also the question of how much of my visitors are actually human. It's one of the likely traffic sources is robots and yeah that happens on twitter a lot but that happens pretty much everywhere too and yeah, i kind of understand i have a robot visiting websites for my own purposes as well But the question there becomes, am I catering mostly to humans or is someone just spidering my site? Looking to get some kind of a, well, to get the data off me. That data I work so much on collecting and aggregating and that's not something I tend to block to be honest I've got no problem with basically data circulating it's just that, for instance, most of what I'm doing this morning is update data from websites which blocked my robots. They're trying to advertise for Best Buy and Staples, for instance, uh, and they're both making my job a lot harder. Yeah, which is one more reason why I'm trying to, well, I'm trying new things. Because uh, what I'm doing currently is just getting harder all the time. So I'm really hoping to find something, some kind of... I'm looking to be able to create something somebody else's want. And right now, I didn't have much success there.
That webcam is a pretty interesting choice. I have one of those myself, although this is not what I'm currently using for the show. Uh, and yeah, it's built for video conferencing. So uh, if you do group Skype calls or stuff like that, where you're two or three or four or more gathered in front of the laptop to do a Skype call with someone, uh, that webcam is built for that sort of thing. It's got microphones adapted for that situation. It's got a wide angle view and uh, because it's built for video conferencing in a business environment, they require no driver in order to work. You just plug it in and the webcam, it's, the webcam itself does all the work. All the autofocus, the auto exposure. So it will even work on Linux machines and Mac machines as well as they would on Windows which is not a common thing nowadays uh, and yeah that apps for to uh, any situation uh, indoor or outdoor without the uh, without involving the computer at all so uh, yeah you can use it on multiple machine without installing extra software or anything like that you plug it in and it just works Only downside I've seen to those is because it works without drivers or anything like that. Uh, the autofocus, in my experience, is a little bit tricky. Definitely had several ca uh, calls where uh, the camera didn't necessarily know what to focus on, uh, doesn't have face detection or anything like that, as far as I know. Uh, so it wasn't able to. Um, manage the focus necessarily as intelligently as it would on uh, a webcam which would be driven by a driver. So all, all things to keep into uh, to keep in mind. Hey, Mr. Lloyd, <laughs> thanks for uh, joining in. Uh, the C920, if it has any competition out there, um, 
the thing is the C920 right now, one of the big differentiator on it is uh, basically that it works on, uh, well, basically it's a smart uh, webcam compared to most which are driven by the drivers. So uh, the uh, simple plug and play no installation required is, uh, um, how would I say the big differentiator on it? Uh, I know um, there's a few out there. Depends on what your needs are. I, I need to uh, put a little bit more research on Irand webcams. I hear a pretty good thing about Razer's offering, uh, the one with the ring light and everything else. Uh, I just wonder. How much of it is uh, well promoted content? Yeah, I understand that most people during my stream are probably going to be streaming, uh, well, working too. It's, uh, yeah, trying to. Uh, to help people whatever way I, w I can uh, that but yeah, a new stream format might help me uh, stream during better period and be more helpful, I hope. Looking into webcam. Best bang for my buck. Built-in compression if possible. Just personal display for video call for work. Well, what I'm using right now, right now, and I haven't seen that specific model in store for quite a while. Let me try to bring that on screen. But yeah, I've got the expensive C920. That one I'm actually currently using in uh well in the window i keep that to uh keep an eye on my dogs <laughs> for the reason I, uh, I listed earlier uh because it's i use it on an old imac core uh, core 2 duo is it even duo yeah i think it's a duo uh that uh, i've uh, recycled and converted into uh basically just something that lets me keep an eye on the dogs deliveries that sort of thing because i work from the basement where heat management is a little bit less of a problem and uh, mm -mm. Right now, what I have on my webcam for this stream in uh, OSCOM, if I remember right. OSDOM. And those things are really cheap. For a while, I had it among my recommendation, and it costed only 15 bucks Canadian. So in the, it's an extremely cheap webcam. Uh, but it works perfectly indoors. Uh, so it's a uh, fixed focus, but the thing is, if you're sitting at the quote unquote normal distance from your uh, monitor, you're already within the fixed range it has. So uh, unless the C920 doesn't try to auto focus all the time, uh, it, so it's, well, you can see it in the corner right now. I think it's fairly clear. Uh, of course, I'm using a microphone in order to have a slightly better sound quality in here. Um, but yeah, I think the microphone is not too bad. It's not the best, but you know, it's never, you never get the best quality on those. And let's see, can I bring it on screen? Yes, I can. Let's see. 
did not come up. Okay, I'll have to look into that system a little bit more. Just let me change my view real quick. Yeah, you use an external mic too? Yeah, good thing. Yeah, it's one of my pet peeves and uh, pretty much any time I do video conferencing with somebody else, I always try to make sure I'm using the... have headphones on, try to have a good microphone on. You know, it, it could just be a headset with a microphone on it. But it's a little bit of one of my pet peeves. It's uh, hearing myself through uh, the webcam on the other end and that sort of thing. Video conferencing et etiquette is not something uh, my parents necessarily uh, care about that much. All right. So I'll just... I just have to switch view and uh, do a few things to my scene here in OBS. But yeah, I should have something a little bit uh, easier to do those things. Okay, error 404. Well, at least I know that works. Oh, that's why. I was using the link ID rather than the device ID. All right, here we go. So this is what I'm uh, using currently. And it's extremely cheap. It's one of those made in China, often even delivered from China. But it works fairly well. Been using this one for over a year now. It's been working very fairly well. And I know there's a few equivalent to that webcam still in stores. And I'm sure that in the US you can find it at an even better price than I do. So let's see. Prices, as you see, that can change quite a bit over time. And uh, yeah, it can be as low as, uh, see, I had it for $12.30 Canadian at that point. I'm pretty sure that one was from eBay. And it's a 720p camera, so more than good enough for uh, most needs in terms of uh, video conferencing and... Uh, all of that so yeah uh personally that's what i would go for uh if you can find a nose dumb usb webcam uh that looks like this at 720p i think they have an maybe they have a newer version out there or something like that uh so yeah for the prices you can get this i think i got mine for 20 bucks back here back in the day um yeah the uh quality on that has been more than good enough for what i needed it doesn't have any of the quote unquote good features but the thing is it's calibrated already for the for typical interior lighting which is well what i'm streaming with right now uh, and uh, typical computer setting distance as well so uh, yeah worst thing worst case scenario you spend maybe 20 bucks on a new webcam and uh, if it doesn't work it's not a big loss right returns at amazon's have been uh, very easy for me to take advantage of too and not take advantage in the sense of uh, you know getting returns i maybe shouldn't have gotten 
but rather uh, <laughs> uh, well you know it's good it, they usually pro uh, provide pretty good service I find So yeah, that would be my pick for a webcam right now, even though it's not currently as cheap as it used to be. I also saw they had a bigger version, a wider version that uh, sported a higher resolution, 1080p, I think. And the price on it was pretty cheap too. I just haven't tried it yet. But I must admit, I was kind of itching to buy one <laughs> just for just to experiment. I haven't done it yet. Maybe later. So, yeah, um, webcam, you don't need to invest a whole lot in those. An ancient Logitech C30. Yeah. Yeah, I think I still have one of those around as well. I think mine cooked in the sun, however. Just one of those things. I usually work away from the door. And uh, since we only have one car here and uh, my wife is away with the car, uh, most I get quite a bit of online deliveries. Yeah, a little round ball, exactly. That's the one that I cooked. It still works if I plug it on a computer. Uh, I get an image, it's just very overexposed. It wasn't a window for a while, so uh, <laughs> eventually the sensor gave out, which is kind of normal. I'm already uh, kind of surprised that it lasted the time it uh, it lasted in a the window there. Yeah, investment on a webcam, you don't need to put a lot in there. I I think I paid something like 90 bucks for the C920 back in the day. And I I actually got a lot of complaints about the video quality using that webcam, but never got any complaints using the uh, 20 box webcam. So uh, now I'm not that, uh, that concerned about <laughs> webcam quality, especially since, well, you see it's, Right now, I think it's good good enough for streaming. And yeah, it's not going to give me bragging rights or anything like that. It's like, let's say the Razer one. Uh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> so far I've been very happy with it. Uh, of course, I've got a few extra concerns before I start listing things on TicketVisor. Uh, Personally, I value multiple uh, that they're uh, compatible with multiple platforms quite highly simply because, well, I tend to experiment with those quite a bit. So I always try to go as close to driverless as I can personally. Because the thing is, you I never know what I'm going to plug this on for a while. Uh, it might be hooked up to a Linux machine one day, a uh, macOS machine the other, and might be even on Chrome OS at some point. Which uh, doesn't really have much options to install drivers on. So uh, I try to... Uh, I value my platform mobility quite a lot and that's one of the thing that that's one thing that most people don't care about and i'm i'm fine with that too i just need to implement platform compatibility for accessories on tech advisor so i've got a few um 
a, a good few windows only webcams that I would want to list. The only thing is, uh, yeah, I don't have something to say. Well, I'm only going to recommend that webcam along with Windows computers. I have to, I have to program that in. Oh, and I see this gaming computer is making a comeback. It's going back down to 1800 Canadian. Because, yeah, last time I recommended that device that was uh, almost a month and a half ago, it went out of stock uh, in two days, pretty much. But that had pretty damn attractive specs. And fairly affordable, especially since last time I recommended that one, it was during the GPU shortage. Uh, which is a little bit the current situation as well. Oh, good. Nice to see someone else that uh, values some uh, platform agnosticity, if that's even a word. <laughs> But yeah, I've always been experimenting quite a bit. I even went without Windows computers for a little while at home. Uh, but yeah, always add something, a, a certain attraction to the underdog, I would say. But uh Yeah, now it's almost a professional requirement. I try different things. I don't have a lot of money to spend on computers and accessories and stuff like that, sadly. But uh, always try to, uh, especially try the cheap options, you know. Because that's, uh, that's where the interest of my uh, clientele lies the most. Although I'll need a new PC eventually, this one is starting to be pretty old. Although, I, I say that, in theory, I need a new one. In practice, it still works fine. I think it's nearly 10 years old at this point, too. So yeah, I'm kind of amazed at how, <laughs> how well this computer is aging. I actually like it more now than I did when I first bought it. For some reason, Windows 10 did wonders to compatibility on this specific set. Fixed pretty much all the kinks there used to be on it. So yeah, there's a lot of things Windows 10 does that I really don't care about. But in terms of uh, performance and uh, bug fixes, um, I am very happy with it personally, which is strange because I mostly hear the opposite opinion. There are people having issues with the updates and all of that. It mostly fixed issues for me. It did get a little hairy at work, however, with the amount of since Windows 10, Microsoft is releasing those giant patches every few months. And I mean, it's, it's fine. It's just that every once in a while I need to wipe the computers at my other jobs. And I've got a f something like, well, let's see, 20 something employees, uh, 12 computer there, 9 there, 15 there. Well, yeah, over 50 machines to take care of at my second job. And every once in a while, I need to wipe everything, put them back in the state before the client started taking classes or using them and messing them up, installing. Roblox and all those crappy things on them. So I do a wipe every once in a while there. 
problem is is that now it takes uh, it takes several days to apply all those updates again <laughs> and of course every, every time I wipe I try to make a new image and uh, make sure that from now on I don't have to apply that one it's just that yeah I've got gigs of patches to apply every time I do <laughs> I do a lab wipe or anything like that. So that has been time consuming, not to mention bandwidth consuming. I'll have to make sure that the peer to peer functionality of, uh, um, Let's see, Windows Update has been uh, implemented by Microsoft is enabled on those machines because, uh, yeah, otherwise I'm spending a lot of effort there. But yeah, in the personal context, in my home, yeah, Windows 10 has been pretty fantastic. Even though I don't use 90% of the new features really have no reasons to. I have no desire to speak to a computer personally. Which is one reason I haven't tried home assistants and stuff like that. called case all system updates and imaging of our user PCs yeah I can fully understand it takes uh, it's a full-time job for one person makes me the <laughs> developer hardware yeah 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 and right now I'm a little bit of everything got many balls in the air and uh, there's a few of them I'm looking forward to uh, let someone else someone else juggle them sadly not in a position to hire anyone sadly All right, let's just look at things really quick. Ah, not bad, it's 10 o'clock and I'm 48% done. Still have 29 links I really need to take a look at before I publish the newsletter. And I think I'll just go stretch my legs real quick and uh, take a quick bio break, come back with more coffee, and I'll be right back. Uh, so I'll just leave the list of uh, recommendation by archetypes. And yeah, I'll be back soon.
All right. Managed to time my return pretty much with the presentation. That was kind of lucky. And yeah, got fresh coffee as well. That's going to help a lot. All right, let's finish the rest of my data gathering so I can um, make the best newsletter I can. Also, let the dogs out. So, yeah, the third computer is opening and I'll be able to uh, keep an eye on them there. But uh, if I have to leave in a hurry, well, that might be because one of them is barking a little too much for my taste. Try to take it easy on the neighbors. <laughs> and one of my dogs is a little bit of a barker. Not too bad, especially if I compare her to uh, some of the other dogs in that we've had in the neighborhood. But, uh, you know. Trying to be a good neighbor as much as I can. It's just that that dog gets a little nervous when she's left alone outside. Well, she's not alone. <laughs> she's with uh, her half-brother. But yeah, it's one of those weird thing. One of our dog is uh, very, very calm, very relaxed outside, but cannot have trouble uh, identifying the source of different sounds when he's inside. And for the other dogs, it's the exact opposite. She's nervous outside, always alert. But when we bring her inside, she's very calm. <laughs> Barely barks inside. You know, unless someone rings the doorbell or something like that. Which is one of the reasons I have a camera at the front trying to keep an eye on uh, deliveries. <laughs> trying to minimize the barking. Yeah, they have uh, pretty interesting personalities. All right, that should do the trick. So yeah, I'll probably be craning my neck even more for the rest of the stream. Now I have five monitors going on at the same time. And yeah, I was talking earlier this week to uh, a client who wanted to have dual monitors set up for every employee at... Uh, at the company, they were hoping to reuse all an old monitor stock they had, and uh, was trying to explain the uh, the challenges that come with a multi monitor setup. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with my uh, five monitor setup, especially for streaming. I've got something that I need to keep an eye on on pretty much every single of those screens right now. While usually it's a combination of uh, entertainment and work and <clears throat> sorry, and work. But right now it's everything on as a business purpose. But yeah, the thing is, yeah, I'm alone. I play every single role in there. 
So I do not have the luxury of being able to focus on a task unlike what you would assume an employee would be doing. Plus it took quite a fair amount of learning, adapting and tweaking my setup so that I would not end up a day uh, having crazy neck pain or anything like that. The way my setup is made is not something most people would like to necessarily work into. And if I had to do it all over again and all with new equipment, let's say, instead of the... Well, all of those are recycled in some way. Some of those monitors are over 10 years old. So I'm basically just stretching, reusing stuff that other people are discarding and stuff like that. So most of those are end-me-downs in one form or another. But let's say if I was to start new, I would probably have much fewer monitors than that. And just let uh, Windows multitasking, Windows handling do the rest of the work. Probably have super wide screens or, or you know, for the most part. Streaming is kind of weird in a way that uh, sometimes having an extra monitor is kind of the best way to do it. Not necessarily the case for most work. But yeah, I, I had mess up my setup wrong a few times. And yeah, I definitely uh, paid the price with pretty intense neck pain there. All that amount of uh, head turning, it's, uh, it can get bad for you pretty quick. Yeah, that was interesting. One of the, my most popular article on the site for a while was uh, basically the articles where I was discussing um, well, basically ergonomy and how uh, how to set up your workstation. Nothing that went as advanced as my own workstation, of course. My needs are a little extreme there. Most people don't need and really shouldn't try to uh, multitask to the degree I do. It's kind of uh, the product of uh, basically how my life kind of organized itself. But ideally, you don't want to do what I'm doing right now. Always funny to watch a corgi roll in the grass. Always put a smile on my face. <laughs> And hopefully that doesn't mean she that uh, I'll need to give uh, give her a bath. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Hopefully. Oh, uh, yeah. Pretty happy with my corgis, <laughs> I must say. <laughs> There's a, there's a dog show in town, I think, next weekend. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have uh, a few other members of the uh, Corgi Club coming home to stay for the event. We're kind of helping, uh, you know, reducing... Uh, Well, traveling cost for a few other uh, corgi owners, and they're coming to uh, compete here in uh, the um, well, come formation of, uh, competition here at the dog show, and that's probably going to be the last dog show for uh, our boy Sherlock. After that, Nelly's planning on uh, maybe getting him neutered. He did. Uh, he did sire quite a few interesting uh, litters out there, but uh, yeah, his temper is a little. Is getting a little iffy. He's still a very sweet dog and all of that, but uh, every once in a while he kind of get the idea he's, suppo he's supposed to be an asshole. And uh, yeah, that makes things a little bit complicated and uh, we'll see if uh, removing a little bit of the hormones out of the equation are going to help things along a little bit. But yeah, he got a chance to... Uh, help the breed, contribute to the uh, development of the breed. And uh, he, he also kept the, hormone long and, uh, the hormones long enough to uh, fully develop to. Sometimes the male, when they're neutered too early, they, their bone structure don't quite fully develop. It's kind of a strange and most people wouldn't notice it's just that i've got so much breeders and uh come formation grade corgis around that uh, i kind of know the uh the finer point of the thing all right and one of my dogs just peed in the spot where the other dogs was rolling earlier. Uh, I think someone will need a bath. I might try to keep them outside until I... Uh, get a chance to uh, publish the video newsletter <laughs> after that I can't relax a tiny bit usually Stores. Reaching 55% with 15 links I still need to get to. 
So that's going to... Now I'll be able to wrap this up pretty much at my usual hour. And I have to go run and handle the newsletter real quick. Right, no big change on this one. Right, the iPad Mini 4 is still a thing. Surprises me all the time, especially considering that the iPad mini 4 uh, actually sells for, well, costs more than the full-size iPad. And I really, really like smaller tablets, actually, so that part is not what I'm questioning. But... Um, yeah, it's just pricing seems wrong. It's just because, yeah, the iPad mini 4 was created at a time where the uh, full-size iPad was uh, over $600. But now you can get a full-size iPad for $400 brand new. It's not even the refurbished or the, uh, you know, uh, the questionable quality or origin ones. So, um, yeah, it's a little hard to buy a 7-inch tablet that is currently, what, 4 years old at least? Probably even more than that. Um, and pay the same price for than for a full-size iPad, which just got out with... The Apple A10 chip in there, which is actually pretty uh, pretty impressive overall. And sure, it's in the uh, regular iPad, the A10 is not necessarily put in a situation where uh, it can flex its muscle to the uh, full extent it could. But still, you compare that to... Uh, between four and six years old product. Yeah, uh, not sure why they're priced the same. <laughs> probably cause that much to manufacture, but, uh, and they're probably not interested in designing another iPad mini. 
I'm just surprised that it still managed to sell. And for some reason, Best Buy still often lists them as the uh, as one of the most popular products on their site, which kind of baffles me. It's definitely not reflected on my own site stats, however. Uh, definitely have zero visitors looking at the iPad Mini 4, to be honest. So it must be one of the differences in demographics. And I'm guessing their stats also include people in stores, while I only have the uh, people that come to my site looking to be, to be able to compare what the iPad is capable of compared to similar products. And there's not a lot of competition out there for the iPad, I must say. Especially at its at the price point it, it had for the last two years. Most of the Android tablets are suffering from pretty much the same thing I was describing for the iPad Mini 4. They're a product that was created back when the iPad they were co uh, competing for was yeah over $600. So they're priced that way, but now yeah, they're. I don't. I think the most tablets out there. There's almost well, there was no flagship tablet created on Android for the last four years. So uh, yeah, it's it really looks like they gave up. The market is often described as, well, you've got two kinds of tablets. You've got the iPad and you've got the cheap $100 tablets. And uh, yeah, a lot of those $100 tablets are definitely of dubious quality. And uh, yeah, you're probably never going to get any software updates out of them. Only exceptions I've managed to get, and it's a very recent option here in Canada, is the Android Fire tablets. Which, yeah, to be fair, uh, I like mine quite a bit. So that is still in stores, only over at the source. Mm -hmm. 
All right. So I've managed to cover 61% of my um, of my links this morning. I'll try to handle the remaining 40% this afternoon. And I'll go and tackle the newsletter, then the video newsletter. So stay tuned for those. And uh, yeah, I'll probably be streaming tomorrow morning. Uh, same stream I'm doing right now. And I'll see uh, where the weekend takes me. If I'm lucky, I might be able to stream some signal from Tolva. So thank you very much for watching and joining me today. Uh, definitely had a great time today. And uh, yeah, if I don't see you later, have a great weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs>